thanking you guys for coming out to episode 42 of the Downtown Podcast for this very special Halloween episode. For those of you that are just visiting, the reason we put the Downtown Podcast together each week is so that we can talk about all of the special things that are happening in downtown Las Vegas. So every Thursday at 9 o'clock, we fill my living room full of friends to talk about the news, events, and people that make this community special. And the reason we can get very talented volunteers like Sean and Susan and Pavel and Jackie is because... They all have the same belief that what's happening downtown is actually a blueprint, which is going to be something used over and over again for anybody who wants to have the feel of a community at the size of a city. And we don't think that blueprint is going to be something that you can actually hand to an architect. We think that blueprint is going to be something that's sewn into the support that we all give each other in events like this. So we're going to step out of the shoes of our day-to-day -day lives and into the shoes of the many small business owners, entrepreneurs, and tech nerds who are defining just how this city-sized experiment and to pay for the beer for this evening, we have <laughs> Krista, who is behind some of the biggest names, including Flavor Flav and Scott Stratton. So tell me, first off, thank you for bringing some of the best guests we've had on this show. But what are you here to talk oh, about today? Oh, well, wonderful. You know, I mean, it, you know, we really, we live, play, and work all in downtown. And so we're passionate. Um, you know, I'm the CEO of Ego Entertainment and Growth Opportunities. My girls go to the Downtown Project Ninth Bridge School. And we absolutely love everything about what's going on here. And so it's been such an amazing experience for us that we really have done everything we can to try and build up this community and share it with the world. So it's my personal mission to drag every musician or talented individual <laughs> from anywhere else other than downtown Las Vegas to downtown Las Vegas. So it's been really rewarding to be able to be a part of what's going on here. Yeah, you've done a great job because you were responsible for getting Flavor Flav on the podcast, which is 25,000 views by far more than anything else. And you're always walking around with some kind of celebrity, whether it's Joey or yeah, anyone, you know, right? Well, we're really excited. You know, we do music management and PR, social media management, and just overall strategy, specifically for entertainment and fast growth entrepreneurs. So we're really the people behind the scenes. So very rarely are we the ones in front of the camera. So it's been really nice to be able to help the people in our community. And of course, today I have our Joey Pirro, play high or go home sticker for everybody in the audience. Sitting on your seat, so enjoy. And Joey Pirro, who's also a fellow resident here in the Ogden, in downtown, and has been a leader in the music industry um, here in the downtown core, is here, of course, to show his support. And we're all just very, very excited about where the direction where music is going in downtown Las Vegas and in our community. That's good, yeah. He had Imagine Dragons open for him, right? <laughs> I remember right. Isn't that that's how it feels like it went? Uh, it, well, you know, it felt that way for us as well, I yeah, have to tell I you. So. <laughs> the killers wanted his autograph. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, it's wonderful having you here in the Ogden. I appreciate all the help that you give to the podcast. And uh, everybody check out uh, on Twitter your ego growth, E-G-O-G-R-O-W-T-H, and then entertainmentgrowth.com for the website. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Great costume, too. You guys can see she's got tentacles under her. Yes. <laughs> some really cool news events to talk about this week, don't we? For our first terrifying story tonight, the former CTO at Zappos, Arun Rajan, was tragically murdered last night with a butcher knife at the stroke of midnight. Las Vegas police described this killer as a common downtown community member, and they advised that everybody stay inside and lock the door as this killer is still on the loose. Okay, so can we like turn this music off for a bit? Yeah? yeah? All right. And for some actual breaking news, we're gonna be actually talking about something real that's happening, right? Okay, yeah, okay. 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 real, okay. real, that's fine. Thank you for that, Dylan. Okay. <laughs> actual breaking news is that the announcement of the BizSpark App Academy is Ooh. launching very soon. Now, we have the exclusive scoop on this. No one has been told about this. They came straight to us to announce. So get excited because the BizSpark App Academy is an app building program designed to help early uh, stage startups get their apps to market. And it's also helping entrepreneurs as well by providing assistance to them to publish their app to their store. 
this is kind of some exclusive content going on. So this program provides three months of paid membership at the Innovation Center of all places, right, like and you it. guys all know how awesome the Innovation Center is. Um, developmental tools, applicable to tokens and credits, business and technical mentoring, as well as much, much more. This sounds like an excellent scoop. Yeah, it's everything you need to be Bill Gates. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I know. It's right there packaged up for you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you're excited about BizSpark App Academy 2, you can find out more by contacting Steve at S-E-O-W, so that's Steve Sow, at Microsoft.com to apply for more info. So Microsoft.com, guys, really, really exciting. And you can also follow them on BizSpark App Acad on Twitter. Okay. Which sounds really, really awesome. Uh, the next thing we want to interview really, uh, sorry, we, we want to announce really, really quickly is that the SWAT bot campaign that we had on the show yes, last week. Yes, it's funded, right? It was funded. So it finished three days after we interviewed them and they exceeded their campaign goal. And so they were at about $26,000 when we spoke to them. And three days later, they exceeded their goal of $35,000 and they ended up with 40K. Wow. So congratulations. <laughs> We just wanted to say congratulations to Eric and Rachel and everyone else involved with SwapBot. And thank you to our lovely audience, because I know that a lot of us actually donated, including Scott Stratton. Yeah, Scott Stratton. That's he another, donated another 700 we bucks. For, yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see how that, that lab goes. And um, yeah, we just wanted to definitely give them some coverage yeah, for that. Very cool. Congratulations, Rachel. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to talk now to Progressions Labs. Mm -hmm. So we've got Andy here. So tell us a little bit about what you're on the table for this afternoon, this cool. evening. So, do you want your, you want your music? I'm still, I'm still music over here. No, 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 you're good. Not mm -hmm. the you are loud Let me know if you need any well, crazy music. Um, so three months ago, we started this crazy experiment where we took three teams and really threw them into the middle of the downtown Vegas tech scene and um, gave them a little bit of funding and a lot of support around them and, and um, some space and work in progress and just sort of thought we'd see what happened. It was a big experiment. And three months later, we had three awesome teams who were able to progress through the program, learned a lot, um, and are all still out there kind of fighting along in their uh, entrepreneurial journey. And I'm here to announce that we're doing it again. Woo! Yeah, right? All right, all right. Yeah, three, three won't be a problem. Uh, we've got a, uh, an, uh, an alumni now in the audience here, Angry Dan Ebel. Yeah. That's who, very uh, true. <laughs> Bruce he went Banner. through the program, yes, right? The whole if you're only looking yeah, for the Hulk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um, I'm really excited to hear that you're expanding this too because it was quite lucrative and I'm really excited also to see which startups come out of this too. Yeah, yeah, we were able to look at it. We took um, sort of at the three month point where we felt like everybody was sort of you know progressing through the program. We looked at it and, and really took the lens as um, you know bringing people into the community and seeing what it took to you know get them integrated and, and really find their way through to the right resources and we actually noticed one of the teams hiring engineers who came from California into Vegas. Oh and, great. Um, awesome. All of them are still at the point where they're thinking they're going to maintain a presence here and, and really start to build out um, some some iterations on what they came in with so it's really good to see that. I remember we grilled I them when they were on asking teams. them if they yeah. were going to stay here so it seems as though they've been yeah. true to their word. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah thanks for having me. So uh, next up, we are going to cross to Mike from Local Motors. Now, I'm a huge fan of you guys. I actually first read about you in uh, Maker's Next Industrial Revolution. Nice. Super cool yeah. book. You guys are an Street excellent study. case study as well. So, um, I'll autograph it later. Yeah, we, we had the books yeah, in here. Please do. We had the books in here that. for months. I would love that. I would love to come <laughs> down and spend a week building a car with you guys. You can totally do that. We're going to be right downstairs pretty much. So. Awesome. Ooh. Yes. So you guys are basically a, a bunch of 30,000 designers, tech enthusiasts, and engineers all coming together on the internet to design a car from scratch, right? Right. So tell us more about this awesome project. So aside from, well, in addition to, I should say, mm -hmm. the engineers and the designers, we also mm -hmm. have fabricators. So what okay. we do is we empower a, a global community of makers right. uh, to innovate in the vehicular space. So we okay. don't just do cars. We don't just do bicycles, nice. motorcycles, any type of vehicle that moves people, moves gear. Uh, especially when it's for a certain local area, wherever there's a demand, mm -hmm. we can fill that demand by using uh, the power of our online community of over 30,000 members across Amazing. 130 plus countries to solve vehicular uh, demands in a certain local areas, hence the name of the company. Awesome. And you guys are here because you're launching, mm -hmm. right? 
So we've got this right. champagne here. Yeah, we've got a ribbon cutting event tonight, guys. This, oh, this is awesome. Is, see, this is dangerous because my Red Sox just won the World Series last night. Oh, yeah. Night. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, we'll pretend. Yeah. Our, our Red Sox, our Red Sox. Yes. Yeah, you've been primed for at a party. I like yes, it. Yes, the Red Sox nation. So, yeah, I, I shouldn't claim them as my own completely. But, um, yeah, so as I said, we are a, a world of vehicle innovations. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that we, we guide ourselves through that uh, world of vehicle innovations is... We uh, have basically five key values mm -hmm. that we hold uh, near and dear to our hearts. The first one, as I mentioned, is community. Mm -hmm. So empowering that online community Excellent. Of, uh, of makers, designers, engineers, enthusiasts uh, to, again, solve local problems locally. So local is the second one. Mm -hmm. And then we do it open source. So we like to say co-create versus crowdsource. Because mm -hmm. you know, we, we feel that crowdsource kind of has a negative connotation to it where you kind of uh, send out yeah, a, yeah. a demand and then you just kind of pull it down. It's almost like you're robbing it from right, this right. Com <clears throat> excuse me, community that's out there. But if you're co-creating, you've kind of smashed down the wall that exists in between typically designers and engineers or mm -hmm. designers and fabricators and you're working together to come to a, a goal. They must um, be wrapped to just to see that car come to life. And I'm sure some yeah. of them have come up to help build you some of the cars and stuff like that, right? It's all right. It's so much fun. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Vegas. I like it. So ton, tons of fun to see that happen. So myself as an engineer, that's uh, kind of uh, an enriching experience to work with the designers and, and kind of see how the other half lives, so to speak, and right. to work together to, right. to uh, again, work towards a, a common goal and, and do it quickly rather than, uh, you know, Toss it across the wall, and then now the engineer, thank you, has to deal yeah. with someone's, you know, someone's idea that maybe doesn't necessarily work from an engineering perspective. Right, right. So from the very beginning, we're smashing that wall down and doing things, um, basically, uh, you know, at the scale of about uh, five times faster and at a hundred times less cost That's as far as in the automotive world goes. But again, we'll expand beyond that into. Bicycles. We just developed a uh, motorized bicycle, which I we'll also have an that. electric oh, cool. version yeah, of. We did a motorcycle, and we've got a whole bunch of other things uh, on on the burner again. Over eighty thousand plus designs That's on our site. So. I can definitely see why Vegas Tech caught uh, why you caught their attention. So yeah, it's, we're really excited. It's kind of a match made in heaven, really, because mm -hmm. what we do again is based around community, being local, doing things open mm -hmm. in a sustainable manner, and. Uh, you know, to, to do it in a high quality and an excellent manner. You know, excellence is kind of that last one. Of course. You know, if you've ever seen uh, Talladega Nights, Ricky Bobby, you know, <laughs> just like him, we wake up in the morning, we piss excellence pretty much. You know, so All right. To, piss, kind of, to kind of pissing of excellence. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Congratulations and it thank you for coming out. Cool. There's some. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! yeah. It is. I wonder, Woo! maybe Dan, Dan might have been here in episode zero. Mm -hmm. Were you here? You were one of the first people that wrote that. Oh. Yeah, that we, we, we didn't have an audience back then. We didn't know it'd blow up uh -huh. like this. We thought, we thought it'd just be a thing in our living room. Uh -huh. but. I'm still one of the noobs. I came in like episode 20 or 15 or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So what do we got for events coming up this week? So the events this week, we're going to focus on... Um, events for people that are either startups or entrepreneurs. So it covers everything from workshops to mixes. So this sounds really awesome. The first one I'm going to talk about is a workshop and it's going to be on Tuesday, November the 5th and it's called Landing Page Best Practices, right? So landing pages are super popular, especially in the startup field, particularly if you're launching or if you just need that kind of 60 second elevator pitch online, right? So this is a really useful one. Uh, you were going to be able to learn the best methods for building high converting landing pages. Uh, they'll also show you live examples of winning landing pages that you can learn from, and they'll also show you just how to build one. Um, so this is going to be led by Seth Waite from Smash Metrics. Now, if you'll remember yeah. that there were a previous beer sponsor, so they're always good to give a go. And uh, this is going to be held at Work in Progress. You can get tickets on Ticket Cake. Yeah, Seth is amazing. He knows mm -hmm. his stuff. Yes, he definitely knows his stuff. Uh, next up is the T-Band Fold Mixer. T-Band are back, and they're going to be holding a mixer on no November the 5th. 
and it's going to start at 6 p.m. and go right through till 8. The price is only $15 per person, Dylan, and it includes one drink and an entry into a raffle where they're going to give away cash prizes at the end of the night, which sounds pretty Ooh, cool to me. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be held at the Commonwealth, which most of you will know is a really beautiful, decadent venue, and it's right in the heart of downtown, which is perfect. So definitely get down to that. You can find out more on tband.com. Next up, we have our Young Female Entrepreneurs Vegas Tech Online Meetup. Um, this time it's going to be featuring Alexia Vernon, and Ooh. she's very well known on the circuit for her public speaking and her workshops. Um, you can get tickets on Ticket Cake for that. You can join Young, uh, young Female Entrepreneurs Vegas Tech host Jacqueline Jensen. She is at Jackie M. Jensen on Twitter. She's going to bring all of the peers together online at 4 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesday, November the 6th. And uh, Alexia is going to be talking about stepping into your moxie, the intersection of communication and leadership, which sounds pretty cool. <laughs> so you can tune in live and watch this online, which is really cool. And if you have any questions for Alexia, get in ahead of time and tweet them at Jackie M. Jensen on Twitter, and uh, she'll be able to answer your questions. It sounds very, very cool. Very cool. Next up is From Startup to Survival. A candid discussion on running an independent game development studio with Michael Legg, which is really exciting because yeah. he's very experienced in the field. That's going to be on Thursday, the 7th of November. And uh, this is definitely something I'm interested in. I, I really liked that movie, Indie Game, which okay. is really, really cool. And it just shows like the path of creating an indie game. Oh, uh, this, this event, however, is going to be at the UNLV Business Startup Center. Um, they've been a podcast sponsor in the past. So yeah. yeah, full of podcast sponsors tonight. So if you're thinking of launching an indie game, you definitely need to get down to this. Mike Legg is the president and co-founder of local indie studio Petroglyph Games. And he's Ooh. going to give you the details from his 27 plus year career working on leading um, and launching several indie titles. Now this is a free cool. event and again it's going to be the UNLV Business Center which sounds really awesome. You ever had an idea for a video game? Kind of. Like I, <laughs> I, I designed a few video games in college actually and uh, one of my college ideas that I actually ended up doing was you take Pong and one paddle is the wolf and the other is a rooster and there's hens behind the rooster and okay. the wolf tries to throw rocks at the hens and you have to block the rocks <laughs> otherwise he takes a hen and eats it so yeah yeah Did keep it under 1999 yeah. <laughs> i mean it wasn't the... really successful but it was actually really fun how about you no i haven't ever had an idea for a video game you're just too busy making an awesome ticket of website, course right? i had <laughs> ideas for video games but i think uh, it's okay we'll skip them they're not good they're not as good as that hen rooster game so. yeah no, i don't want to get embarrassed that was really not good yeah. <laughs> And to close out our show, because we are, uh, sorry, our event section, because we are talking about startups, we have Lance here, and he is an avid supporter of the Downtown Podcast. We always see him in the audience, right? Yes. And you're also a very active um, SynShop Hackerspace member. I see you in there all the time inventing awesome stuff, including the video shirt that you're wearing right now. But tonight, you're actually going to be talking about your special internet help startup, right? Which you created at the Celebrate Tech Cocktail event recently. So why don't Correct. you tell us about that? Uh, basically, it's the Internet's uh, first emergency help system. Uh, so when you need help, basically, you, whatever phone you're using or computer, you just literally press help. Uh, since more and more younger people are not using the actual uh, phone, uh, except for the data, now they have the ability to be automatically located, uh, whether by parents or whatnot, or in case of an emergency like in Colorado, uh, where the idea actually came up, uh, people needed help and you couldn't get a hold of uh, the local police or uh, transferred to the fire department and whatnot. However, data was still available. Uh, so the idea is you send out a request and basically crowdsource help uh, for people around you to help you. This is fantastic. Like this brings the community together. And if you see someone that needs help that just can't get the help that they need, this is great. Like I think Dylan described it as almost like a 911 for Twitter, right? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. You that actually, was my summary of it, but yeah. Well, yeah, right. well, that's exactly it. You can actually choose to post to Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and let your family know maybe you're in a hurricane or something. Hey, I am alive, since that's another big thing. People don't know if their family is alive or well or whatever when an emergency like that occurs. Yeah, you see yeah. that a lot happening, right? You know, and the main, the main thing is I just want everybody to know that, like, Lance is out there doing stuff like this all the time. Like, I saw him at Celebrate the entire mm -hmm. week, just heads down trying to build this, but, you know, he's constantly working on these kind of products that don't have these huge monetary ends, but they have these great moral ends, and it's like over and over and over again. He's been a big supporter of the podcast, but big supporter of people that just need help. So that makes me a big supporter of him. Yeah, so you've done everything. Let's give a big round of applause yeah. for Lance. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. 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 Good guy. So, uh, so nice. <laughs> I also need 
need to mention. Oh. Oh. <laughs> to mention he actually baked goods for us tonight so if you're in the audience step up to the kitchen and pick yourself up a halloween treat which is awesome Ooh. so thank you again yeah. this is brilliant sure. so many layers so yeah. um so how can people find out more about this startup that you're uh, basically visit uh rohs it's really ross without the a uh, mm -hmm. and that's reach out and help someone so the idea is you sign up uh, link your account um right now as long as you have at least three facebook friends you're good to go Excellent. And uh, sign up, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to use it. And help somebody. <laughs> I definitely will, yeah. Thank you so much. Call for and help thanks for coming out. This is thank awesome. You. Yeah, thank you, Lance. Appreciate it. particularly eerie episode of the Downtown Podcast, we are going to attempt to revive the spirit of our unexpectedly dead guest because he was tragically murdered last night with a giant knife that left blood everywhere. And some of the pieces of guts were found all over. Some near maggots, other by spiders. But it was particularly tragic because he led all the technology aspects at Zappos <laughs> since 2009, including the creation and execution of a roadmap that included evolving a shoe-centric platform to a category agnostic platform, an advanced enterprise data warehouse that provided unexpected, unprecedented insights into the shoe business, and migration to a new warehouse management system Seeing as though it's Halloween tonight, I thought we would attempt to revive this man's spirit. But first, let us have a moment of silence for the great man whose life has run its course. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of silence, please. I'm here. Devil, I have made my deal with you. Now bring me the spirit <laughs> of Arun. Oh my god, it worked. Arun is here. Arun, I made a deal with the devil to bring you here. Can you hear me? I've been here all along, my friend. He can hear. He can hear. It worked, guys. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I've got a great startup crowd, and I wanted to bring you back from the dead to talk about the importance of data-driven decisions. Sounds awesome, Dylan. What do you want to know about it? Lots and lots and <laughs> lots. OK, so what, when you were alive, what was your official title at Zappos? Uh, CTO. Hey, me too. You know the handshake? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's legit, guys. He's legit. We know him now. OK, so for startups, what are some of the ways they can experiment to not over-engineer, but still kind of discover what their market is? That's right. So the whole idea is, I mean, the way we do it is, we try not to invest too much in anything unless we know it's going to pay off. And the way you do that is by running experiments. Uh, you don't, you know, when someone comes <laughs> and says, Pavel helps us build experiments. <laughs> so he's still, he's still, we're going to keep him for now, yeah. despite that laugh. Despite that. <laughs> so the idea is, you know, you build, you don't have to build something huge and highly scalable to. To, to make sure it works, right? To, you, know, you build an experiment, you spend a couple of weeks, build um, a portion of the functionality, maybe something that's not scalable, but you test it. And if it works, and it actually proves to have the upside, uh, then you invest in it. Uh, an example, here's an example, right? Like Tony has great ideas all the time, and he'll come, he'll, he'll come in and he'll say, hey, you know, we gotta, we gotta implement every kind of login on the website. By login with Facebook, Twitter, right, right, right. whatever, right? And uh, so, you know, one of the things we talked about is like, do we really need to enable all of these logins or do we just need to enable 
one that's ubiquitous, right? So we put in we put in dummy buttons, like we just put in a you know login with Facebook, a login with Amazon, login with Twitter button, just to see which ones would People be most clicking. interesting for our user. And they were dummy; they didn't do anything. And we just kind of tracked the clicks for a while, for a couple of days. And customers obviously clicked on it; nothing happened. But we oh, found okay. <laughs> but, it's okay, okay. But we were collecting data, right? And we found that a disproportionate number of customers clicked on login with Amazon because in a commerce context, right. people prefer to log in with Amazon. And so yeah. that's the only one we implemented because, you know, so we have login with Zappos and we have login with your Amazon credentials. Okay, so it's kind of like A-B testing, but you're more like, are you taking a group or is this going on the main website where everybody's It's usually tested? an A-B test, okay. right? So, so it's like you show answer, yeah. just a Zappos, in that case, just to let Zappos log in and, an, and, you know, one that showed Zappos plus Amazon, another that showed a Zappos plus Facebook. So it's an ABCD test in some ways. Gotcha. Okay, so, well, like, inside Zappos, <clears throat> what are the other things that you're doing to, like, enable people to be entrepreneurs inside? Because I'm guessing, like, were they doing this on 20% time, or were you saying, like, go ahead and, like, do they approve these kind of things with you first, and then you decide right. if it's worth it? Like, tell me about the insight culture. Yeah. So, so if you think about it, right, when we were small, like, when we, you know, three, four years ago, we had more capacity to work on innovation. But, but as we grow, things like, things like security, things like availability, things like redundancy, disaster recovery, all these things become much more important. Compliance, SOX, PCI. Things start to yeah. add up, right? Uh, when you're smaller, you can do a lot more innovation. So what, we, so what we did was, we did a couple of things. We, you know, we built a public API. We created a San Francisco labs team that could build and innovate on our APIs. Uh, we built a mobile team that could build and innovate on our APIs, where they weren't kind of like um, constrained by That's some of the. And how big are internal. these teams? Like these labs. So teams like the labs teams, ten okay. people. The mobile team, mobile teams, about ten people. And, is it, and right. you just let them go after like moonshots, they, or are they just like kind of weird things? They, like, they all do sort of the same thing. They experiment okay. before they invest heavily, right? So they might have five experiments going. They'll run A/B tests, and they'll see how they perform. But they have legs, and they'll continue to invest. Okay. Right? Um, so. In this case, so but then you know, but the core team, which is about eighty engineers or so, are working on all this heavy, you know, on search and checkout, and uh, our product details page and our gateway pages, and they they spend a lot of time doing those things. But then they also work on a lot of lot of scalability and redundancy and security of those components, right? Okay. And so what we're working on is trying to figure out how, but those things don't differentiate our business. So what we're trying to figure out is how do we figure out. How do we make sure that we're not working on, anything, working on anything that's commodity? So we're right now going through what we call a mega, it's a mega project, it's called SuperCloud, where we say, you know, we compare ourselves to a startup, right? If you start, if you start a company, you go, you know, most of your develop, developers are working on innovation, right? They'll host, you host your site on, on AWS, uh, all the infrastructure is taken care of, right. and you start building features and functionality, right? In our case, we're main, the competitors that we go up against are like those startups. And they're working on differentiators. They're working on social features. They're working on mobile features. They're working right, on right. They're still machine the market learning, up. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're working on things that actually differentiate themselves in retail. They're not working on a better search engine or a better checkout. Those things. Does are, that, but does that freak you out? Or? Well, it freaks us yeah. out because like, that's what we're spending most of our capacity on. So we've got this, like I said, the super cloud project is about taking all of those things and giving it to our parent, Amazon, who's amazing at kind of scaling up the core e-commerce platform. Oh. Good, okay, right? because that basically goes right to my next question, which is like, now, now that you get this thing moved over to this Amazon right. Super Cloud, what are your engineers gonna do? Because so I hear different things from everybody. We, but just let him know if he's gonna Paul, go. I'm not sure, but, but, <laughs> but the rest of them, the idea, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, oh, yeah. but the idea, Paul, I'm just kidding. I like that verification but, <laughs> now. It's locked in his memory now. He can't, he can't <laughs> shake it, yeah, he, he can't, can't shake it. it. We'll get a shot after this, he'll be fine. <laughs> okay. um, but, but the whole idea is to reclaim everyone's time to work on differentiators, right? We've got to compete against these folks that are killing oh, us. Oh, so yeah, it gets to be more fun now. Exactly. Oh yeah, no more of the lame stuff. That's right. So now we triple, yeah, okay. our, we triple our mobile team, right? Oh, good, we, good. We'll create a machine learning team. We'll create triple a social team. Like right? That's the like idea. Watson? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Smarter than that. Just wait, e man. For e-commerce. Yeah. <laughs> the jeopardy of e-commerce? Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. So, you, so even, and are you still hiring too? I mean, are you going to keep like growing the company we've in got, the development side? We've got a huge amount of open recs. Cool. So if you know developers, please send them our way. Okay, and you get to just, and they get to experiment with all the... That's exactly right. Cool. All okay. right. Because I see Tony as someone who's like trusting people to just go off these gut instincts and to like go in any direction they want. And then I see you kind of making these data-driven decisions. But how yeah. are you guys kind of balancing that out inside the company? Yeah, they're, they're actually really... They're compatible, and there's differences as well, right? Yeah. But they, but they kind of go. First of all, let me start with the company itself. The company is founded on art and science, right? There's an art side of the company, which is more about the brand, 
and then there's the science side of the company. So in terms of like how we how we buy product, right? That's based on science. We need to know what our what our customers' buying patterns are and make sure we buy the right product that meets their needs. Right. Similarly, if someone comes to the website and they like a certain feature or function, they vote with their feet by clicking on a function that they like, right? right. And so we gotta invest in the things that our customers vote on. So that's all data driven. But things like our customer service or you know, our community focus, those are about the Zappos brand. They're about sort of emotionally connecting the world with our brand. And for those, that kind of thing, you, you can't put a, there's no numbers, there's no financial justification. Right. If our customer service team needs a feature to service our customers better, that's an emotional brand related thing. And we'll just, we won't sit there and like A-B test it if the customer service teams feel like they really need a feature to service our customers better. Generally, we won't do a lot of math and financial calculations behind it. Um, the fact that we're engaged in this community and helping build this community, that's not something, there's no finance or math behind it. It's a, it's a brand right. play. And that's, you know, that's, that's what Tony's vision's about. So that's the art side of the business and then there's sort of the science side of the business. And they both work in conjunction and even in terms of like giving our employees and our engineers freedom, there's still, even though we have numbers, we just give, we, we tend to try and give goals, right? So if there's a search team and we tell the search team, look, your goal is to try and get more people to the product page. You need to get 10% more people to the product page every, this year. How you achieve that is up to you, gotcha. right? Yeah, yeah. So there's still freedom in how you accomplish things, but there are goals for the company. Okay, I like that. Okay, so um, I guess like for the last question, I was just sort of curious about what have you learned from like answering the phones that still is like changing your perception of the, the company? Yeah, I mean, like on the customer service side, I'll give you an example. Like, you know, customers call and at Zappos, we encourage our customers to return things, right? They don't, you know, order, order three, th three sizes if you're not sure what size you need, right? And return the two that don't fit you. Um, so customers in general like to return things or exchange things. And uh, we try to build features, like, not, like in the past, they had to call customer service. A lot of customers don't like to call. Obviously, we want them to call if they want to. Right. But if they don't want to call, we want to provide a feature for them Right, to, powered by service to self service, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. self service and exchange or ret return. And, like, again, there's no financial, I can't come up with a financial return for it. Yeah, it might reduce our customer service costs a little bit, but it, it really, the engineering investment is much bigger than any cost savings in the, in the customer center, yeah. in the call center, right? Uh, but we go ahead and do it because, like, the feeling that we right, have it just feels is that it right. makes our yeah. customers feel happier and better, right? And so we, we just invest in it. We don't need to be tested, we just kind of put it live. If right. customers want to use it, they'll use it. And we put, generally, our instinct is right. I think as a customer service company, we invest so much of our times. Like, you know, I got four weeks of customer service training when I joined the company. We all do 10 hours of customer service on the phone each year. I think we all have a good instinct about what our customers want. Okay, your 10 hours probably coming up too, huh? It you is coming up. Christmas? Yeah. It is coming up. All right, I'll be, I'll be auto dialing until I get you. We'll see what it's like. All right, man, give it a shot. See, see what, what happens. questions I get. <laughs> All right, so everybody, check out Arun Rajan. He's on Twitter at ADRajan451. I'm guessing your middle name is Dylan? Dylan, Dylan. Oh, exactly. good, that's what I assumed, that's, yeah. That's, that's what you I assume everyone's middle initial is my name. That's what I mean. But uh, yeah, ADRajan451. And then uh, you can see his work by checking out zappos.com. And uh, hopefully we'll find that killer. And, uh, you know, thank you for coming to visit uh, Thanks, the Halloween Thanks episode. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, thank okay. you. Nice. That was fun. I'm here with Dan. He is Angry Dan on Twitter. And, Dan, I'm really sorry because you are the Hulk tonight, but I did think you were old Greg from the Mighty Boosh. <laughs> It happens. It's not easy being green, huh? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> okay. Dan, if you were to be able to meet any celebrity or superhero or cartoon character, who would that be? Uh, celebrity? I'd have to meet Steve Carell. He's kind of my idol. I love him. He's a funny man, comedy, and uh, I just try to be funny and have a good time and everything. So Steve Carell is the guy I'd like to meet. So he's very funny. What's your favorite show or movie that he's in? I quite like The Office. And Forty Year Old Virgin is pretty good. The Office is awesome. You know, I'm kind of biased. There's Dan in real life, and so uh, I'm kind of biased to that. So because it's it's my name, you know. So. <laughs> Well, thanks, Dan, and thanks for drinking the rest of our champagne from the local motors <laughs> line. <laughs> we'll see you next week.
in this Rest of y'all just running lips Creeping on and come up to They can share we in this bitch Tweet to your followers Remember like a flashback Vegas Tech Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag